This video might be a bit controversial to you, but you have to know about it to uh, best succeed in your business, okay? So you have to strike while the iron is hot in the service and contracting business. And if you'll give me just a few seconds here, I'll explain the rest of that, okay? Hi everyone, I'm Scott Heimler with Successful Small Service Contracting. And I show you how to control your income, your schedule, and your future in your own single operator service or contracting business while keeping your overhead low and your income high. I've operated my own single operator service business for 30 plus years and I've taught hundreds of people how to be greatly successful at it since 1999. And as always, I am glad that you're here. So what do I mean about striking while the iron is hot? Well, this is the first scenario, okay? Let's say you're in a, a heating, cooling, and plumbing business. And Mrs. Jones calls for service and needs a non-breakdown threatening service on her air conditioning. It's still running and cooling, but the, the thingamajig outside is making noise. Mrs. Jones is one of your long-term customers also. You schedule it for Tuesday at 9 a.m. All right? Well, come Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, Mr. Smith calls in a panic that he has water in his basement and doesn't know where it's coming from and needs you now. So you're a single operator, what do you do? You can't be in two places at one time. Of course, you can call Mrs. Jones and tell her that what's going on and you must reschedule. But what if she doesn't understand and, and just demands that you, that you be there? After all, she says, you said you would be here. And she put off her, uh, her hair or nail appointment to meet you, okay? This causes stress to most service and contracting business owners. And they tend to either avoid it or not even maybe not even call or make up a lie. And none of this is the way they go. So there's more on this later, okay? The second scenario. You're in the handyman business, and you had an appointment with Mrs. Abercrombie for two weeks to install new bolts in her toilet paper holder. <laughs> as you are, and, as you're, and as you are en route to her job, you get a call from Mr. Pettit. He's saying that he's leaving town for a few weeks and wants to sign the $35,000 proposal for remodeling that you gave him. Well, that's great. But he has to leave in the next two hours for the airport and wants the work done while he's gone. And he says, oh, by the way, sorry for the short notice. So you could really use a job like this since most of the jobs that have been coming in have been like Mrs. Abercrombie's. You know, toilet paper uh, holder bowls just don't pay that much, you know. What to do? do? Do you dump Mrs. Abercrombie? Okay, more on this later. Third scenario. You're in the cleaning business and on your way to a good client's office to clean on your regular day. Your phone rings and it's another client's friend that is having a bridal shower for her daughter tonight and her cleaner is sick and can't make it. She states that she will pay you three times the rate if you can work her in today before the shower. Now, do you let the regular client go today? What do you tell them? Well, all three scenarios are real. This happens constantly in the service and contracting business. You know, Murphy's Law, right? What can happen will. But one thing is constant. You have to put the man on the money, and the man is you, okay? I'm not saying your business is all about the money, but you certainly have to be aware where the best money is coming from. You have to be working in the areas of your business that you most enjoy doing, and you have to be working where you can make the most money every day. Like I said earlier, these type of scenarios cause a lot of stress, a ton of it, for the service and contracting business owner. And unfortunately, most will lie to the client. They just, they just say it's easier. Well, you get comfortable with that lie and the fact that it went over, and so you tell it again and again and again. So lying for whatever reason is wrong, but I'm not here to be holier than thou you know, or anything like that. I'm just trying to help you avoid a very embarrassing and uncomfortable situation where you tell that lie again and the client says, well, that's what you said last time. Ouch, that hurts. You know, I got a flat tire, my daughter's sick, or my van broke down on the way, or the ultimate service and contracting business killer bullshit. Did I say bullshit? I said bullshit. They just don't show up. Let the client figure it out, they figure. And, and all this is so avoidable. So what do you do? Well, you grow a pair, okay? Be a business person and just call the client and tell them that you can't make it. And it goes like this. Well, hi, Mrs. Abercrombie. It's Scott. I know you changed your day for me, but I can't make it today. When can we get together again? Tomorrow, the next day, or next week? I have several things open. And, you know, just figure she's going to be upset. 
that will lessen the stress bubble on your end, okay? Just don't worry about it. Be compassionate but firm. What you've done with this phone call is treated her better than most contractors and service providers have. Sure, she's not happy, but you called and you let her know, and you let her know you're willing to be there at another time. It isn't necessary to give her all the details. That is your business and not hers. Besides, no one needs to know that they were bumped, as it's called. When you go to her home at the rescheduled time, you know, do something for her. Bring her a coupon to her favorite coffee shop or flowers to show you that you're truly sorry. Keep track of what happened in your calendar and try not to let it happen again in the future. You know, this doesn't mean that it won't happen again, but the goal is when and if it does, it's handled properly. This is the Contractorpreneur way, and that is why your business will grow faster than most and your reputation will be more solid than, than most being known as an honest contractor. Okay, well, this is it for this week. Thanks for being here very much. How can I help you? I, I can't help you if you don't reach out. So leave some comments, leave some questions below, and just count on me getting back with you, okay? All right, we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot.